after Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, people in Jerusalem who believed in Jesus were persecuted or treated cruelly because of their faith. One of Jesus' followers, Stephen, was even killed. A man named Saul had watched in approval when Stephen was killed. Saul wanted to put an end to the church. He went into the believers' homes, dragged them out, and put them in jail. Many believers fled the city. Saul headed to Damascus to arrest believers there, but on the way, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. Get up and go into the city, then you will be told what you must do. Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So the men who were traveling with Saul led him by the hand into Damascus. Ananias, a disciple of Jesus, lived in Damascus. The Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision. He told Ananias to go to the house where Saul was staying. Ananias knew that Saul had hurt many believers and that he arrested anyone who believed in Jesus. But the Lord said, Go, I have chosen this man to take my name to Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. Ananias obeyed. He found Saul and told Saul that Jesus had sent him to help. Ananias put his hands on Saul and Saul could see again. Saul got up and was baptized. Huh. For the next few days, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus. He began to go to the synagogues to preach about Jesus. Saul told the people, Jesus is the Son of God. The people were amazed. They recognized Saul and knew he had wanted to put an end to the church. Now he was one of them. The Jews did not like Saul's message. They planned to kill him, so one night, Saul left the city. The disciples helped Saul escape by lowering him down the city wall in a basket. Saul was also known as Paul. Jesus appeared to Saul and changed him inside and out. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Jesus called Paul, who was once an enemy to Christians, to spend the rest of his life telling people the gospel and leading them to trust in Jesus. We interrupt this program for breaking news from Kristen Powers. Hello everybody, Kristen Powers here for WWJD News. I'm live in Damascus right now where we have heard about a very unusual event that took place on the road. We're going to find out if we can get some information from some people that might have seen what happened. Let's see if we can find anybody who's willing to talk to us. Hello. Hey dudette, what's up? Did you happen to see anything unusual that happened today on the road to Damascus? Yeah, girl, like, um, so, me and my porg, <clears throat> we were going down to this- A porg? Yeah, yeah, this is my animal here. Oh, okay. He loves the water. So me and my porg, we were going down to the beach, and we were gonna get some gnarly waves, you know? And all of a sudden, like, while we were going down there, you know, I saw, like, this bright light, and I was like, whoa, what was that? A bright light. Yeah, it was this bright light, and I was like, whoa, dude, you see that porg? And he was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. And I was like, bro, you're right. It looks like aliens over there. Aliens? Yeah, I thought it was the mothership. And, and I heard, like, this big, loud rumbling coming, and it was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. And... And I was like, whoa, is that my stomach? Is it, is it lunchtime? So we went okay. and got a burrito. All right. And um, then we thank you. Some, thank you. you. You've been very helpful. Yeah, no problem. Let, let's let's hey, see if uh, we can find somebody else who okay. might talk to us. See you us. later, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if we can find somebody else who might be able to tell us a little bit more about what happened. Oh! Um, did you happen to see what happened on the road to Damascus today? Um, 
Maybe we could get a translator? Does anybody speak T-Rex? Okay, did you see anything on the road to Damascus today? Oh, Bob, cut! Does anybody have a towel? Let's see if we can find someone else to talk to us who actually knows about what happened. Well, are well, we on hello. camera? Well, yes, actually you are. You're on WWJD News. Oh, what's up, Grandpa? You always watch So today, news. oh, well. So today, we heard that there was a crazy event that happened on the road to Damascus. Something about a bright light shining. Did you happen to see that? Uh, can I, I was listening to Blinding Lights, if that's what you mean, on my way home from school. It was a pretty good song. Uh, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the event that happened where bright lights shined in the sky. Like when uh. I throw a flashbang when I play COD? Um, no, no. I'm talking about on the road to Damascus, like in real life when you're walking. Did you happen to see a blinding light? Uh, I was playing with my homies yesterday and I saw a blinding light in one of the games. They were like trolling me and they were like, yeah, it's so funny. Um, no, I'm talking about real life. Like real life, like when you're walking with your actual legs. Uh, video games is life. Life is video games. No, so, that's um, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, talking what about you? How you know, long are we talking here? How long ago was this? This just a little while ago. Oh, Were you I don't walking? That. I don't remember that. Was well, it? I mean, our mom makes us walk home from school because we need exercise and all that. <sighs> I have nothing to say to this. I just don't think we're going to find anybody who's actually going to be able to tell us what happened on the road to Damascus. Oh, yo, mom's calling. Hold up. Yo, what's up, mom? Oh, yeah, we're on TV. It's time for dinner. Oh, why do you always do this, Mom? We're on TV. 15 minutes. That's all I want. 15 minutes of fame, Mom. That's all I want. Um, I, I think you should go. Yeah. 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 Let's keep looking. There's got to be somebody around here who could tell us what actually happened on the road to Damascus today. I mean, it's not, it is his! Oh my it's gosh! Doc Brown, is that you? It was 129 gigawatts of electricity was generated from it. Do you know what we could do with that? We could go into the future. Oh my gosh! It it's Doc Brown. I'm a huge fan of Doc Brown. Do you hear me, Kristen? I, I did, I heard you. There's a lot of power, no pun intended, that's released from 1.21 gigawatts. We could send someone to the future, and I think that's what happened this afternoon, into the, in, 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 in the, in the road to Damascus. I saw the bright light, and you know what happened? What? I think someone traveled to the future. Somebody traveled to the future? Yes, traveled to the future. I, I just, I can't believe it, are you sure? Yes, what you do is you get yourself a nice DeLorean, and then you hit it with, with a blinding light from, from space, and you travel into the future, and I don't know what they're doing there, but we'll find out. Wow, I mean, that's just amazing. Yes, well, you wanted somebody, I heard, I heard you from over there saying, who saw the road to Damascus? I was there. On the road to Damascus, there's a blinding light, 1.21 gigawatts. 1.21 gigawatts, 1.21 gigawatts, 1.21 gigawatts. Well, that was not what I expected, but you heard it here, right from the mouth of Doc Brown. I guess that's what happened on the road to Damascus today. This is Kristen Powers signing off. Now, now, everybody gather around to hear the catechism. Now, 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 woo! Hey everybody, it's me, Kevin the Cat, and we're here to talk about the catechism. <laughs> and today, very special guest in none other than Donovan Sugatan. Hi, Donovan. Um, How's it going? I, um, did I say your last name right? Is it Sugatan? It's Sugatan, but it's close enough. Wow! So today, our catechism is question number seven, and it says, How does the law of God, or what does the law of God require? Well, I mean, Jesus t teaches us that we should love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that we should also love our neighbor as ourselves. Oh, that's crazy. That's so cool. So, um, 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 let me ask you this, Donovan. Um, how do I love God with my heart? Like, do I have to, like, um, like, do something special or like, um, 
Like, what does that mean? That's kind of really confusing. Like, how do I love someone with my heart, like a body part? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. You know, the ways we can love God, you know, with all of our heart is, you know, by when we worship God is worshiping from our hearts, you know, not worshiping or doing something, you know, just because we want to get something out of it, but to just love God, uh, just, you know, because we want to, you know, like if you were to go over and help out your friend or when you're maybe doing dishes or doing chores at home, you know, obviously we don't always want to do it, but we shouldn't just do the chores just because mom says, oh, you know, well, she'll take us out for ice cream or something like that. But sometimes, you know, to show our appreciation and show our love, you know, we do it just because we want to do it, you know? And so that's how we can love God that same way, you know, is by reading our Bible and praying, not because we get something out of it, but because, you know, we just want to do it. That's really crazy. That's really interesting. And um, um, you said something really interesting there, and it was about ice cream. And I really like ice cream. Do you like ice cream? Oh, I love ice cream. My favorite flavor uh, is cookies and cream. That's my favorite. Wow, I'm gluten free, so I can't eat cookies. But um, I really do like um, like um, mint chocolate chip. It's really yummy. Have you ever had mint chocolate chip? I have had mint chocolate chip and I don't like it. It's not my flavor. Wow. So, um, um, I got another question for you here. And so it talks about um um loving our neighbors. Like who's my neighbor? Like my neighbor is like this old old man who's like really crotchety and mean and he's like, Hey yo, hey yo guys, get off my lawn. And um um sometimes he's really hard to love. So how do you love somebody who's like really hard to love? Well, our neighbor, you know, it's not just the people that live next door to us or if you're living in an apartment, not just like the people above you or live that around you, but it's everybody, you know, everybody that lives around us in our community. And sometimes it is very hard to love somebody that maybe, you know, doesn't really show love to us. But God says that we should love others, you know, like how he loved others as well, you know, by showing them true genuine love you know kind of how we show love to god with our hearts you know not showing love so that we get something out of it but by showing love to them you know that's how we can show who christ is because what we want to do is show people who christ is you know and be able to love people as christ loved people so that they can know and they can feel the love of christ and maybe god will be able to touch them and fill them with the holy spirit so that they can know god better and feel who god is Um, and um, wow, that, that really helps. I think that really helps me um, to understand the catechism uh, question a little better. And uh, thanks, Donovan, for taking the time to help us. Um, yeah, we'll see you I'm next week. Bye. We'll see you next kid. What, next weekend. Bye. Bye. After Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven people in Jerusalem who believed in Jesus were persecuted or treated cruelly because of their faith. One of Jesus' followers, Stephen, was even killed. A man named Saul had watched in approval when Stephen was killed. Saul wanted to put an end to the church. He went into believers' homes, dragged them out, and put them in jail. Many believers fled the city. Saul headed to Damascus to arrest believers there. But on the way, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. Get up and go into the city. Then you will be told what you must do. Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So the men who were traveling with Saul 
led him by hand into Damascus. Ananias, a disciple of Jesus, lived in Damascus. The Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision. He told Ananias to go to the house where Saul was staying. Ananias knew that Saul had hurt many believers and that he arrested anyone who believed in Jesus. But the Lord said, Go, I have chosen this man to take my name to Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. Ananias obeyed. He found Saul and told Saul that Jesus had sent him to help. Ananias put his hands on Saul, and Saul could see again. Saul got up and was baptized. For the next few days, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus. He began to go to the synagogues to preach about Jesus. Saul told the people, Jesus is a son of God. The people were amazed. They recognized Saul and knew he had wanted to put an end to the church. Now he was one of them. The Jews did not like Saul's message. They planned to kill him, so one night Saul fled the city. The disciples helped Saul escape by lowering him down the city wall in a basket. Careful, careful! Slower, slower, slower! Go down nice and easy, nice and easy! After this, Saul became known as Paul. So just say the poor part again. <laughs> <laughs>